Hi, my name is Margarita Morozova and I teach foreign language education course at Kazakh Balkan University of International Relations and World Languages. I teach my course with the help of the book Internet-Based Teacher Training Guide. And today I offer you to listen to the way um, cognitive visualization works in this book. So we see lots of visual aids, lots of pictures. And today I'm going to explain you how, how can teachers use uh, cognitive visualization to stimulate learners' professional, critical, and creative thinking. So, um, I offer you to look at the pictures um, that you see on the slide, and you see that all, this, uh, all these pictures were used as a base to model image-based thinking stimulating case. So, uh, as you see, it works as a communicative incentive to stimulate professional communication and thinking. And uh, we all know uh, that students are different in the way they perceive things. So mainly uh, it depends on their um, personal and academic uh, background, their psychological characteristics, and their professional motivation. And what I offer teachers to do is to use visualized fragments to um, stimulate uh, learners' expressiveness in developing their professional identity. So uh, mainly uh, they're free to interpret visualized fragments which actually helps them to freely express their professional inclinations, professional talents, and reveal their hidden professional identity. In my context, in teacher training, okay, uh, in teacher training course. So, uh, well, actually, what I offer you to pay attention to today is how can teacher model image-based thinking stimulating fragment to um, stimulate learners teacher training thinking. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, the quality of this kind of case equally, can, equally depends on the quality of an image you pick and the quality of a task you equip it with. So, and today I offer you to see uh, the way this kind of a cases that I present in my book, uh, We May Model. So, uh, actually, uh, could you please pay attention to the slide where we have two main pictures. Uh, that are going to serve as a good example of teacher training case, of image for teacher training case. So uh, once you see uh, two kind of pictures, uh, you may actually notice that one of the pictures lack the text. So uh, if you see on the drum, uh, we may uh, see the word test, whereas the second picture uh, has this word removed. And what I offer you to think about is how can we use this kind of a visual fragment to stimulate our learners' professional thinking. Uh, actually, uh, if you see, if you pay attention, uh, the second picture widens and broadens um, students' professional thinking. Because uh, if they need to think about the first picture, it is obvious that they need to think about the test, whereas the second picture lacks this notion and their interpretation may be absolutely different. So they may think about different things and they may actually uh, interpret the second picture differently. So it doesn't depend on the word test. And if you pay attention to the next slide, you may see that uh, I offer you to think about two levels of difficulties. Difficulty, I'm sorry. Uh, so the first uh, level of difficulty uh, pursues uh, as the ultimate aim of the interpretation of elements in the picture. So as you see, uh, point three, uh, think about five professional problems that may be mm, uh, that may be revealed, that may be elicited from the picture. And as you see, it goes as ultimate aim. Interpretation goes as ultimate aim. Actually, it is good for um, to begin uh, your lesson or to start uh, brainstorming uh, some more ideas. But what I'm more interested in is the level, uh, the second level of interpretability where the process of interpretation goes just a transfer uh, between mm, interpretation of, uh, of an image and doing the final task. So as you may see in, this, in the slide, final task is going to be the, to work out to offer a teaching training booklet or brochure for a seminar, but it is already assumed that they need to interpret the picture. Actually, uh, if, you, if you see, uh, 
I'm sorry, I returned to previous slide. If you see that the beauty in the um, case, in the second, uh, second level uh, difficulty case, is the following. Uh, whatever they interpret, and no matter how they interpret the picture, they all, uh, the, uh, the task of the case is actual under any kind of interpretation, whatever they, uh, uh, whatever they choose. Uh, no matter if they choose to interpret it like disruptive students, uh, ruin the discipline, or stressful environment in teaching, uh, the task is already and always actual um, under any kind of interpretation. Actually, uh, that's what I'm speaking about. It reveals and it uh, helps my students to express their professional identity and never limits their thinking. Okay, and right now I want you to pay attention to the process of modeling image-based thinking stimulating fi fiction cases. So, and what I want you to pay attention to right now is uh, the criteria of picking up good pictures to model a quality image-based uh, thinking stimulating element. So what I want you to pay attention to Mm, is four criteria. You may widen uh, this criteria um, using your experience uh, or uh, research in the process of modeling. And still, what I offer you to uh, observe as a main one is diversity of elements or their non-standard combination in the picture. So as you see, this picture with the lion, uh, it contains a number of elements like teacher, whip, uh, drum, uh, students, uh, lion, and so on. So uh, typically you can never meet uh, the combination of these uh, elements in reality, which is actually good because it somehow stimulates uh, uh, learners to think about the um, uh, uh, the interaction uh, between elements. So the second one, the second criterion I offer you to think about is interpretability of, t of elements. So you may test it by yourself. So please think about uh, the, I the level of interpretability. If you see that the elements interacting in the picture, uh, they may be interpreted differently depending on your student's perception. It is actually good. For example, if we speak about drum, uh, why uh, do we have drum in the picture like this? So uh, maybe uh, it is the instrument of maintaining discipline, or maybe it is the instrument of entertaining uh, your learners. So if you see that uh, your elements uh, possess high level of interpretability, this is good picture. So uh, the problem uh, may be presented explicitly or implicitly. Still, uh, what I actually practice with my students is offering them to work out to elicit the problem, pro uh, problem statement, problem, uh, problem um, statement themselves. So, and the desirable, actually the desirable criterion is uh, illustration of a scene. So uh, it should look, uh, this picture with the line looks like a screenshot from the movie and it is actually good because uh, your students may be offered an opportunity to think about uh, what happened before it or what will happen next. So this is the desirable fourth component, fourth criterion. So actually, your final question is, uh, does my uh, picture fit this criterion? So uh, you may use this kind of question to self-regulate. Uh, okay, so right now I want you to uh, pay attention to the pictures that I used for this book to uh, model image-based thinking stimulating fragment. And as you see, uh, only two first, uh, two first pictures with a lion and with a snow white, they fit four criteria, whereas others fit only three criteria. Still, uh, these are good thinking stimulating image elements. So I also use, for my book, I also use different kind of comics, different kind of cartoons, uh, bubble diagrams, um, different kind of uh, schemes, uh, infographics, and uh, cover, uh, and books, and co covers of the books, both electronic and paper-based, uh, to stimulate my learners' uh, compensatory and anticipatory um, skills in what we call uh, guessing or predicting what uh, kind of a content does it have inside or to extract as many content elements as you only can as they only can so the question number two is how what kind of a th professional thinking 
uh, can I stimulate in my learners? So actually, professional thinking can be different. And what I offer you to think about right now is uh, five types of professional thinking that are considered necessary to stimulate and to develop through this kind of uh, image-based thinking stimulating elements. So these are analytic and critical thinking, conceptual and inventive thinking, and reflective thinking goes as separate. So as a base, I offer you to pay attention to the slide. Um, so you see this is comics, uh, cartoon, uh, which is called Perfect Teacher in this case. You see the famous uh, cartoon hero. But in my case, I offered it my students to start thinking about what co a teacher's competence set is necessary uh, for them as future teachers. And each competence corresponds to each pictorial element, uh, which is indicated with the help of an arrow. Okay, uh, so what I want you to think about is the basic uh, task equi that equip this picture, that serve as a base for this picture, that stimulates Yolanda's professional analytic thinking. It actually, uh, it, it is, as I just told you, uh, discuss which teacher's competence symbolizes, uh, uh, are symbolized um, by these pictorial elements. So you see, it looks like fun, and at the same time, they start interpreting elements. And uh, I didn't have uh, students that uh, had identical actual interpretation because they all work differently, and their cognition also work differently. So if you want to stimulate your learners' professional critical thinking, you may ask them to think what kind of elements can they add, omit, or change to improve the illustration of teachers' necessary competence set. If you want to stimulate your learners' conceptual thinking, uh, which actually uh, goes in the context of teacher training, uh, you may offer them to think what kind of uh, pedagogical notions uh, should, should they be aware of to guess um, and to guess correctly the meaning of pictorial elements that picture actually competences. Uh, if you want to stimulate Yolanda's inventive thinking, you may think about how can they add two more components to a pictorial element that pictures the competence to make it more expressive, to make it more explicit in its depiction. And finally, to stimulate my learners in reflection, uh, I, just, uh, I can give them a task like this. Discuss which teacher's competences are most difficult to develop and to support during your teaching practice. So I also want to state, uh, to point out that um, in, the, uh, in conditions of uh, uh, Kazakhstan and other uh, countries that use, that teach subject, that teach discipline uh, with the help of uh, non-native uh, language of instruction like English, uh, it is important and it is necessary to uh, preserve this communicative function of the tasks, which actually uh, are very important to support their present level of communicative competence. So what I also want you to pay attention to uh, as a summary of um, uh, this kind of uh, um, command is can I combine two thinking operations, two thinking challenges in one task. And of course, uh, yes, uh, you may do it. So you may um, simultaneously form two or three types of, uh, of thinking types, for example, analytic and inventive, or conceptual and reflective. And if you pay attention to the slide, uh, you may see that in this case, uh, we develop uh, students analytic and um, inventive uh, types of thinking because students need to think about uh, the meaning of um, the picture and after that they need to invent the title for the conference that goes under the, uh, under the emblem like this, uh, Snow White with a um, apple, electronic apple. So uh, this kind of a, a case illustrates uh, conceptual and reflective uh, thinking of my learners because firstly you see uh, you see the bubble picture that you see the bubble diagram and they need to uh, interpret the pedagogical notions that they see and after that they need to um, come up with their own reflection uh, if this kind of competences are difficult to develop and if they are difficult why 
and uh, or this kind of a toolbox, you see Compre comprehension toolkit. It also works best for analytic and inventive competence because they need to think what kind of a pack uh, of objects, pedagogical objects, does does this um, box contain, and after that uh, to think about what kind of uh, objects. Uh, can we add to make it even more pedagogically valuable? And others. Uh, so, uh, and the last question that I want you to pay attention to is, uh, can I, as a teacher, uh, offer them pictorial material to um, work out the task for each other themselves? And of course, uh, this is very important to offer uh, to your learners. You may just offer the pictures like that, so you may pay attention to the slide, where they have, where they just have the picture, and their task uh, as a students of teacher training faculty is work out uh, the pedagogically, methodologically valuable task themselves. In this case, uh, I offer you to. Uh, organize it like brainstorming and after that when in pairs they work out the necessary task equipping the picture they can exchange and think about um, the estimation the reflection of uh, showing each other the quality of task and showing each other the ways of improving the task and only after that they may exchange to start working upon the challenge that they worked out for each other and what I want you to pay attention to is the mail. Uh, I would like I would like you to reflect. Um, I would be happy uh, to reflect uh, to mm, give your reflection uh, on the ideas that I expressed, and you may post uh, those ideas to my mail. Uh, and I remind you that this was a presentation about how a teacher can model an image-based thinking stimulating case. Uh, in my case, uh, for teacher, uh, for students of teacher training facu faculty. Thanks for your attention.